Makoto Niwa, a high school student who is really adept at grading his whole life since he counts and judges the amount of youthful experience he gets every so often. When his parents go overseas, he decides to move to a new town to continue high school and live with his aunt. When Makoto gets there, he finds out that not only is his aunt a little, or rather much prettier than he thought she would be, but also has a daughter. Surprised by this fact, Makoto tries to ask his aunt about it, but she refuses and tells Makoto to ignore this creature. The next day, Makoto goes to school and scouts every cute girl in the vicinity, like the teenage boy he is. When he comes back, he tries to greet his cousin, but she seems to say random robot-like stuff that doesn't make any concrete sense. She orders a pizza and gives half of it to Makoto as a sign of goodwill. She also says random stuff about aliens and gravity as she refuses to let the futon wrapped around her be removed. Later that night, she's cooped up in a room while Makoto comes and asks her about it. She then tells him that since she shared her pizza, she doesn't have enough nutrients to function properly, so Makoto takes her out to eat on his totally not wrecked bike. In the end, when Makoto refuses to take her inside the store if she doesn't take off the futon, she gets up and removes it. The cousin is revealed to be a really cute blue-haired girl, who claims to be an alien who's in town to study humans. She reveals her name to be Toa Erio. Makoto spends the rest of the night eating with Erio and talking about how she's avoiding any extraterrestrial contact in that futon. Clearly just a metaphor for not touching grass. Erio then goes on and on about how she's an alien, but much to her surprise, Makoto doesn't seem to believe her. The next day, as Makoto's returning to school, he's stopped by a weird girl in his class named Ryuko Mifune, who talks in a weird way. After racing with her back home, Makoto is pretty happy, since there had been very few girls with whom he has ever gone home with. Frankly, none, actually. The following day, he makes another new acquaintance named Meikawa, who tells him that she cannot raise her hands above her shoulders for more than 10 seconds. She gets dizzy. That night, Makoto reluctantly takes Edio on a bike ride again. After dilly-dallying here and there, they finally reach the place where Edio wants to be the beach. As Makoto is playing in the sand, Edio tries to go into the sea and almost drowns before Makoto saves her. She tells him that she could fly, but Makoto doesn't believe that. When Makoto asks his aunt, Meimei, about it, she tells him that this happened before and she broke her leg last time, thanks to which she now always covers herself up in a futon and believes that she's now an alien. Makoto carries on with his usual but still rather mundane life. He meets with Meikawa daily, as she sits right next to him, and Ryuko comes to meet him during lunch break every day. That's about all the female interaction he has with women that aren't part of his family. Makoto goes out with Ryuko on a day off since she wanted to show him around the city and they have some fun here and there with stuff until Makoto asks her a serious question about mysteries and she replies properly and seriously, which surprised Makoto. Makoto then comes home and is busy with his own activities until Meme comes up to him and plays some games with him. They both have some aunt-nephew heart-to-heart conversation about why Meme kept Edio a secret. She was drunk and the father did didn't exactly care about anything. She tells Makoto to leave Edio alone and to not get involved with her just because she's cute. Makoto then tries to smell the pillows and sheets, but is caught red-handed in his act. The next day, he takes Edio on a bike ride and pulls a dangerous stunt, launching himself and her in the air just to prove to her that she couldn't fly and that she's not an alien. Edio's delusions finally break and she finally introduces herself properly to Makoto. After that stunt with Edio that Makoto pulled, he's hospitalized for a broken arm. Meimei takes good care of her and doesn't even ask questions. She tries to soothe him with some smooches and other stuff, but being a chicken, Makoto refuses the heavenly offer. Makoto is then visited by Ryuko first, who asks to confirm from Makoto that he wasn't trying to commit suicide. She also hands him over the notes from class. The one-on-one -on -one meeting was going really well until Meikawa comes in in a really weird cosplay to visit Makoto in the hospital. Ryuko is surprised that her visit, but she's even more surprised that Edio is his cousin, and she's living together with her. After two weeks, Makoto is discharged and Meimei pulls a prank on him by locking herself in a refrigerator. Makoto, being the straight man, doesn't find this funny or appealing in the slightest. Meimei then tells Makoto to go get Edio since they're all going for a family dinner now. Edio is still uncomfortable being around people, but she thanks Makoto for freeing her from her delusions. She also says that going to school with Makoto would be quite fun. The next episode begins with Meimei crying and getting depressed over the fact that she was getting 40 years old. Edio and Makoto console her with a present, telling her that it's alright. 
Mei Mei is happy after receiving a present from Edio and tells her that they should celebrate her birthday the next day. Later that night, Mei Mei teases Makoto some more, and the day is finally over. The next day, Makoto wonders about what to get for Edio with Ryuko, and she gets annoyed over it and calls him tactless. As he's at an impasse, Mikawa gives him the idea of taking her favorite cake home, and he does exactly that. When he gets home, he gets surprised to see both Meme and Edio in Twin Tails, and is once again very ignorant about how much he's blessed. Edio tells Makoto that she wants to work somewhere to get back into society. Makoto agrees and takes her to various places, but since Edio's famous for being the weird futon girl, everyone refuses to hire her. She gets really discouraged, but later that night, Meme tells Makoto that she's found the perfect place for Edio to work. Edio thus gets hired at a candy shop owned by an old lady who personally knows Meme and Makoto's father. Ryuko visits the candy store Edio is working at with her friend. They both see Edio there and her friend tries to convince Ryuko that they shouldn't come here now since Edio is really weird and she doesn't want to hang out with her. The next day Ryuko visits the shop out of curiosity and some unrequited feelings for Makoto but before she could make up her mind about going in she's stopped in her tracks by Meme, who calls herself Miss Smooth and Silky clearly a fitting name for someone in her 40s. Later on, Ryuko talks to Makoto about Edio's bad reputation at school. She tells him that he shouldn't get so close to her as people don't like Edio and will start hating Makoto too because of that. Makoto is surprised, but doesn't judge Ryuko because of it. Ryuko says she wants to visit the granny, but as the trio is in there with the granny, she gets tired of the excessively rom-com-esque atmosphere and goes back to sleep. A few days later, Meikawa and Ryuko visit the Toa world. They visit Edio's room, but Makoto really has a lot of trouble keeping her under control and asking her to socialize. Definitely an introvert's worst nightmare. Mikawa sees that some random person is leaving soft drinks outside the place she works at. She then sees some bottle rockets being launched nearby. She puts two and two together, and she goes near the place where she saw the rocket and finds a man in a suit preparing bottles for launching into the air. The man tells her that it's unusual to see Mikawa in real clothes as he's a fan of her cosplay in the store. She tells him that she's interested in what he's doing, and he offers her 5,000 yen for each bottle rocket she makes. The man goes on about his passion for launching bottle rockets since he can't launch a rocket into space, something he's just really proud of. This show was definitely written by an astrologer. Everyone is a space fanatic. Meikawa accepts and comes to the Toa residence along with Ryuko to get their help in making these rockets. Everyone enjoys crafting the rockets and then they make some makeshift food since none of them seem to be master chefs. Later that night, Ryuko tells Makoto that it's her birthday the next day. Makoto wishes her a happy birthday and tells her that he will always be on Edio's side. Ryuko then tells him she cannot be by Edio's side, but she will always be by Makoto's side. At the end of the episode, everyone goes to the beach together to launch the bottle rockets they had made. This episode focuses on Mei Mei and shows all the events from her perspective. Mei Mei was the one who instigated most of the incidents in the previous weeks. On June 12th, she comes across a bottle rocketeer who tests out a bottle rocket for her. The guy immediately asks to marry her since he's known her since childhood, while Mei Mei doesn't even remember her name right. Yeah, that's how little attention girls pay to boys. Mei Mei gets a flashback about the death of Grandpa and laments how sad her granny was since she couldn't do anything against the gods, so she referred to them as aliens. A mysterious boy named Elliot tells her it's nothing to worry about, since they can just fight back the aliens with faith. So Mei Mei makes a request for the Rocketeer, who then seriously asks for her hand in marriage. Mei Mei thinks about it a lot and goes on to refuse him. It is then revealed that the Rocketeer confused Edio for Meikawa, since both of them wore weird clothes. He was trying to woo Edio to get Mei Mei to marry him. In the end, Mei Mei carries Granny to the beach and they see the rocket launch together. Mei Mei's request was to make the last one a big bang, so that Granny knows that the aliens aren't coming for her anytime soon. It really doesn't mean anything, but to be honest, it's cute and it's anime. Mikawa invites Makoto to play baseball with her and some other people. Makoto is quite hesitant as he's never really been that good of a sportsman, but in the end he agrees to do it as it's just something he does for fun. Forget overpowered, this guy is downright average in everything. During the game, Makoto meets some new people who generally joke about the fact that Mikawa still calls him a transfer student, to which Makoto is indifferent. Mikawa asks Makoto if she should have invited Ryuko, but he says that it's not that incentive. When Makoto comes back to the house, Edio asks him about his adventure 
pictures outside. He tells her that he was playing baseball and that she can join too if she's interested. Edio blushes and goes to the other side of the garden. Makoto and Edio go stargazing later that night with Edio's new telescope and Edio joins the baseball gang the next day. Edio surprisingly hits a pretty high shot and everyone is back to the shed for some rest where a strange person in an astronaut suit tells them that he or she is an esper. She then keeps following Edio around as Makoto is busy messaging Ryuko, who couldn't come because of some circumstances of her own. Edio finds refuge in her cousin's arms from the weird astronaut and is finally able to calm down. Later that night, the astronaut comes to their house and reveals her name to be Yashiro Hoshimiya. Remember, stalking's not a crime if a child's doing it. Ryuko calls him and asks if she can go to the festival with him if she makes it to her upcoming basketball game. Makoto agrees. The next day, Meimei makes Makoto take Yashiro home, but Yashiro is more interested in the pool and thus they jump in there. To thank him for all his participation in the baseball club, Mikawa invites Makoto to her house to have some lunch. However, since no day is complete without any awkward child obsessed with aliens ruining it, he spots Yashiro lurking in her garden again and is once again annoyed by it. The next day, Ryuko tells Makoto to come to her basketball game since he promised her last week. There she meets her friend Miki and also runs into Yashiro again. The match begins and Ryuko starts playing. However, she isn't able to perform very well, leading her team to a severe disadvantage. Yashiro then reads the mood and encourages Makoto to cheer for her. Makoto then cheers for her and Ryuko is able to score some points thanks to all the encouragement, since skill really doesn't matter all that much. After the basketball game, it's now time for the first baseball game of the year. Since Makoto is playing, Ryuko is there to return the favor for him by cheering him on. However, things quickly turn south as Mikawa further runs away. He was supposed to be the main pitcher, but in the end, he abandons his post. Like most fathers, don't come back when they go for milk. However, the best girl of the show the young, the sweet, Meme comes to the rescue to lead their team to victory. She puts Edio in charge of pitching, who surprises everyone with her skills since she's unpredictable and no one can compete with her. Makoto is given the responsibility of searching for the missing father. Makoto finds the father, but he says that he was only concerned about the intensity of the game. He tells him that everyone has fears in life, including himself, but they should always face these challenges head on and try their best. When one of the two players is on base, Makoto returns to the game. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.